Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a classic puzzle that's also a popular leak code problem, the 24 game. It's a fun one that combines a bit of math with a powerful search algorithm. Let's dive in. So here's the official problem description. Essentially, we're given a list of four numbers, and our task is to figure out if we can use them to form an expression that equals 24. Let's break down exactly what that means. The core idea is pretty straightforward. You get four cards, each with a number on it. Your mission is to use the basic arithmetic operators, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, to hit that target number of 24. Now there are a few important rules to follow. First, division works just like on a calculator, so you can get fractional results. That's a key hint. Second, you can't just put a minus sign in front of a number to make it negative. The operators must go between two numbers. And finally, you can't just stick numbers together to form a bigger number, like turning a 1 and a 2 into a 12. That's not allowed. Let's walk through the example from the problem description. The input cards are 4, 1, 8, and 7. How could we get to 24? Well, what if we take 8 and subtract 4? That gives us 4. And separately, what if we take 7 and subtract 1? That gives us 6. Then, if we multiply those two results together, 4 times 6 is exactly 24. So, for this set of cards, the answer is true. The real difficulty here isn't the math itself. It's the huge number of possibilities. We have to figure out which two numbers to combine first, what operation to use on them, and then how to combine that result with the remaining numbers. This smells like a problem where we have to explore a lot of paths, which is a perfect job for recursion. We can solve this using a powerful technique called backtracking. The main idea is to try every single possibility in a systematic way. We'll start with our list of four numbers. We'll pick any two of them, apply every possible operation, and then recursively call our function on a new shorter list that includes that result. We keep doing this until we're down to just one number. So imagine we have a list with four numbers. We'll just call A, B, C, and D, or. Our function will first pick A and B. It'll try adding them, and then it'll call itself on a new list containing that sum, along with C and D. Then, it'll backtrack and try subtracting B from A, and call itself again with that result. It does this for all operations, and for all possible pairs of numbers in the list. Now, there's a tricky little detail we have to handle. Because we're using real division, we might not get exactly 24. We might end up with something like 23.99999. For our purposes, that's definitely close enough. So when we check our final number, instead of asking if it equals 24, we'll check if it's within a very tiny distance, or epsilon, of 24. Okay. Here is the complete Python code for our backtracking solution. It might look a bit complex at first glance, but it follows the exact logic we just walked through. Let's break it down into smaller, more manageable pieces. First, let's look at the main function that gets called. Its only jobs are to define that small epsilon value we talked about for precision, and then to convert the input list of integers into a list of floating point numbers. Then, it kicks off the whole process by calling our recursive helper function, which we've named solve. Inside our recursive solve function, the very first thing we do is check for the base case. This is the condition that stops the recursion. If the list of numbers we're working with has only one item left, we check if that item is close enough to our target of 24 using our epsilon. If it is, we've found a solution and we return true. Next, we have two nested loops. The purpose of these loops is to pick two different numbers from our current list. We use their positions, i and j, to access them. The simple check inside just makes sure that we don't accidentally pick the exact same number from the list twice. Okay, so once we've picked two numbers, A and B, we first create a new smaller list. This list contains all the other numbers that we didn't pick. Then, we start trying all the operations. We try adding A and B and recursively call solve, bake. We try subtracting them, both A minus B and B minus A, because order matters. We do the same for multiplication and division. For each operation, we make that recursive call, passing in our smaller list combined with the new result. If any of these calls eventually hits the base case and returns true, that true value gets passed all the way back up the chain, and we stop immediately because we've found a solution. If we get through every single pair, and every single operation without finding a solution, then we finally return false. So how efficient is this? You might be surprised to learn that the time and space complexity are actually constant, or big O of 1. But why? It's because the input size is always fixed at 4. The number of permutations and combinations we have to check is always the same. It's a known, limited amount. The work doesn't grow if the input list gets bigger, because it can't. 
So let's quickly recap the main points. We solved the 24 game using a backtracking algorithm, which is a fantastic pattern for any problem where you need to explore a tree of possibilities. We used recursion to break the problem down into smaller, identical subproblems. And we learned a valuable lesson about handling floating point numbers. Always check if a result is close enough rather than an exact match. Hope that breakdown made sense. If it helped you understand the solution, please give that like button a click and maybe subscribe for more explanations. If you have a different way to solve it, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And hey, if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.